uh thank you sir and uh, it is really a honor for me to be being introduced by one of the stalwarts in the field of type 1 diabetes and dr kamlesh uh, dr ashok sir uh, you know uh, he is a very well uh, known personality and again dr prasanna kumar sir so thank you very much sir for the kind introduction and after the stage is being set uh, by dr rishi shukla sir and uh, dr archana ma'am now it's time for me to talk about something about the diabetes education and i know dr jindan sir you have done a lot for the uh, education of type 1 diabetes people and uh, i would just uh, start my presentation i hope my slides are visible and uh, i am yeah. ready yes sir ji so uh, topic given to me is uh, education and care for pediatric diabetes and uh, let me just uh, this is uh, one of the slide uh, snapshot which i have taken from the type 1 index which everybody is talking about uh, right now and we know that type 1 diabetes is growing fast and it can affect anyone and the numbers are uh, alarming and uh, india is now at the top of the chart with maximum number of diabetes patients with type 1 uh, now being in india also we know that the type 1 uh, index has, has told us that for every two people living with type 1 diabetes we miss a third person who should still be alive and this is because these patients are not able to get actual uh, diabetes care as well as the resources and the support and probably the education also so uh, the introduction uh, i would like to introduce by saying that to maintain good and intensive glycemic therapy families of a uh, ch uh, children living with diabetes they perform a multitude of self management tasks on a daily basis responding to the changes in the activity food and the physiology the changes for the diabetes healthcare professional is to deliver diabetes education that optimizes optimizes the family's knowledge and understanding of the condition and its treatment and assist them to adjust to the living with diabetes so the biggest challenge is that uh, the great and the challenges are uh, more in the less developed countries uh, especially in the developed uh, developing countries and the other resource limited settings where there is a scarcity of the insulin also there is issues re related to the food security and the availability of the basic tools to manage diabetes such as the blood glucose meters glucose uh, glucose so glucose uh, meter strips as well as the ketone monitoring equipment so with this background it is important to understand that diabetes education is a very very critical element of the diabetes therapy regardless of the intensity of the regimen adopted diabetes management also requires frequent and high level of the educational input at diagnosis and ongoing to support children as well as adolescents as well as the parents and other other caregivers so it is important to understand that diabetes education has been shown to be a very very cost effective intervention it reduces the frequency of hospital admissions and emergency presentation in children with type 1 diabetes people who do not receive education or do not continue to have educational context are they are more likely to suffer diabetes related complications so diabetes education has to be uh, an integral component of any care program that uh, takes care of the type 1 diabetes children so what exactly is this diabetes education is so it is not simply telling the patient that you take your insulin you control your diet you control your sugar level and then everything will be fine so this is not diabetes education diabetes education is a continuous interactive process it facilitates and supports the individual and their families to provide care or significant social context to acquire and apply the knowledge confidence and practical problem solving and coping skills which are needed to manage their life with diabetes in order to achieve the best possible outcomes within their own unique circumstances so this is what encompasses the diabetes education only there is one universal principle of diabetes education is that every child or person with diabetes should have access to the comprehensive expert structured education the key word here is a comprehensive expert and structured so as i have told earlier it is not simply telling the patient or the families that you do this and you do that it has to be a comprehensive expert as well as the structured education program which is going to make a difference in the lives of people with diabetes it should be delivered by a team uh, we should uh, follow a team approach interdisciplinary team uh, and it can consist of a large variety of people ranging right from the clinicians Uh, nutritionists dietitians diabetes educators diabetes nurse the psychologists a lot of people they can even the social worker and there are multiple components of it who can constitute this diabetes care team and the responsibility to uh, deliver this diabetes education rests with each and every member of the team one of the important thing is that diabetes education is not a one time uh, affair it is a continuous process it should be repeated uh, so that it is effective 
and uh, the sometimes the priorities of the healthcare professionals may not be the same as that of the child and the family so it should be based on the thorough assessment of the person's attitude beliefs learning style ability readiness to learn existing knowledge and goals so it is important to understand a child uh, who is in the age group of 4 to 5 years 4 to 8 years may be having totally different needs than an adolescent or a, a, grow, a growing a growing child so that the, the diabetes education program has to be tailored as per the need of the uh, children so the benefit of the structured diabetes education program uh, you can find these four key elements it has to be structured agreed written and evaluated curriculum so it is not that i think so that this is going to benefit the patient thus the other doctor thinks so that this is going to benefit the patient it has to be a validated edu educational program and this is i think uh, which is lacking right now in most of the clinical setting whenever we are imparting the education so education most of the time it comes uh, whatever we discuss we decide it is not structured it is not a written affair it is not a evaluated curriculum when it comes to patient education the educators must be trained to deliver this education and we need to assure the quality of the educational program and the educational program must be audited regularly so that the it provides similar kind of quality to all the patients who are receiving this kind of diabetes education the programs are to be planned carefully they have specific aims and learning objectives they are shared with people with diabetes their families and other caregivers and they are integrated into the routine care so this is very very important that how this program should be uh, formed for example we know that daphne is one of the structured education program which takes care uh, of uh, different aspects of diabetes education uh, required by children living with type 1 diabetes so uh, when it comes to delivery every member of the diabetes multidisciplinary team shares the responsibility of giving diabetes education all are responsible for assessing the educational needs also because these needs may be varying at different point of time and different uh, age groups and in different settings and the team should have a good understanding of the principles which are required to deliver the diabetes education and the team should also have uh, sufficient skills which are consistent with the principles of the teaching and the structured education and they should update them constantly to deliver this uh, very very important aspect of diabetes care so uh, is there what does the research tell us about the effectiveness of diabetes education uh, diabetes education uh, research which is based on diabetes education is a complex science because there is a it combines education psychological and psychotherapeutic out methods also but education may be seen as an interface between clinical practice and the research and more and more research is required to improve this understanding that how we can uh, integrate it in, integrate it into the clinical care what methods and philosophy underpin effective diabetes education so it again depends on the local experience facilities and the respective national healthcare system for example the uh, local experience in southern part of the india may be different from that which we experience in another part of the india it may be different from the other developed countries and it may be different from the within the developing countries also so it has to be tailor made and understood by the health professionals uh, which are imparting the diabetes education all the team members of a diabetes care team should provide consistent advice and promote constant goals in diabetes there should not be conflict between the advices given by the team members so one team member is giving a different advice second team member is giving a different advice so all should be on the same uh, should be on the same platform to uh, guide the patient to the with the best of their abilities so these are key principles and practice of the education in children and adolescents and their parents as well as the primary caregivers to motivation so motivation is very very important and it is not just the family or the children uh, they need to be motivated it is the caregivers the motivation uh, the team also needs to be motivated so they are able to deliver their best context is again very very important sometime uh, you may be uh, we, we may wish to talk about a uh, subject which may not be of very relevance to the uh, children with diabetes or their families at that particular point of time so we need to understand that context we need to Uh, create an environment which is learner centered comfortable trust worthy and the discussion happens in a amicable way in a enjoyable entertaining and interesting way also it has to be uh, 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 based on basic concepts which then you can start moving from the simple to the complex steps it has to be a constantly interactive thing it is it should not be a didactic lecture where we are telling the patient and there is no input from the uh, people who are actually receiving the education reinforcement is again very very important we need to repeat repetitively 
uh, emphasize on the very very important points it has to be reviewed again and, and again and once you have completed everything again the summary has to be uh, the things have has to be summarized we need to reassess our programs evaluate again and audit it again whether they are uh, achieving their desired goals or not and move forward we need to continue with the education so these are the key principles uh, which are to be considered in improving the care as well as the education of type 1 diabetes just to give you a brief and this is something which i have taken from the aspire guidelines only so if we talk about what should we talk at the time of diagnosis and what should be given ongoing so at the time of diagnosis a simple explanation about the how the diagnosis has been made then we talk about exploring the feeling of guilt or blame and discuss the uncertain causes of the diabetes we need to and uh, address the grief uh, the loss reaction to the diagnosis because the family will be in a shock whenever you tell them that the child is having type 1 diabetes so this part has to be taken care of we need to discuss the risk of the siblings as well as the interventions available to minimize risk there are other things also because of the paucity of time i will not be able to go into the details of each and everything but the aspire guidelines i will say that they are very very good and they tell us that what are the steps we should take whenever it comes to diabetes education and uh, how methodologically it should be followed again uh, if you look at this slide it is very very important that understanding the different skills like we need to understand that what is the competence in using smbg or the cgm or the ketone monitoring what kind of insulin device the child is using what are the insulin sites techniques about the diabetes diary how do they calculate insulin bolus doses is there any tool to assist them about the carbohydrate counting how do they store insulin so we need to reinforce these things again and again and every aspect of the care has to be Uh, uh taken care of uh, in the diabetes education uh, modules so again uh, this is we need to tell them about the hypoglycemia we need to tell them about what should be done during the acute illness i think a lot of lectures will be covering all this so i will be not going into details of this and there are several challenges which may be different in infant and toddlers their school age children as well as the uh, in adolescents as well for example in the school age children there can be a difficulty in adjusting the time from the home to school and school to home also uh, they may have difficulty in learning to help with injections pumps use and monitoring so there can be ch challenges which are specific to the particular age group also diabetes diabetes education setting it can be given in both ambulatory setting as well as the inpatient setting sometimes and the group education may be more cost effective as well as the educational experience may be more enhancing whenever we are using a peer group or the school group uh, whenever the education is being imparted uh, dr archana has uh, spoken just before and uh, she regularly organizes a special camps so diabetes residential and day camps have been recommended by the ispad guidelines also and they talk about how these camps can actually help the patients uh, in more effectively in bonding in understanding the various aspects of the diabetes care but it is very very important uh, to understand that all the educational activities are camp are effective most if they are matched to the gender and age and they embody empowerment principles otherwise uh, most of the time they may not achieve the desired goals in a uh, few uh, things about the diabetes education and the intensive treatment method many of the times we find that the patient is not on the target so it is important to understand that changing from one form of the insulin regime to another as the only means of intervention is not going to improve the metabolic metabolic control so we need to understand uh, what is going wrong with the patient whenever we have more complex modern therapeutic regimes we need more education more education better acceptance and better outcome so whenever we are using any kind of technology any kind of advanced regimes we should be able to deliver and impart educate education to the patients so it doesn't have to be this way using today's technology alone we could save millions and this is how the diabetes education and digital technologies can help so we should encourage adoption of the digital devices by people with diabetes and the clinicians also new technologies which are available on the smartphones whether web web based applications they are very well accepted by the young generation they are very well accepted by the children and everything so this is this is a plus point and we should utilize it to the maximum uh, benefit of the patient also the technologies which are more uh, most effective they are uh, whenever they are using and incorporating social media tools also so these are the few principles which we should uh, consider and uh, telemedicine again is very very important especially in resource limiting settings because at least you can guide the patient and you can tell them and you do the counseling and diabetes education can be imparted through the telemedicine also 
and clinicians they can provide real time problem oriented education for patients when uh, by using uh, diabetes education so we have this focused meeting which is again uh, the founder of the dtech is dr bansi sabu only and uh, a full meeting for two days is going to happen in new delhi for diabetes technology and therapeutics on 1st and 2nd april so everybody who is interested in diabetes technology you are most uh, welcome to join the meeting so with this uh, my take home message is that education is the key to successful management of diabetes in children to maximize the effectiveness of diabetes tre treatment and the advances in the diabetes management and technology it is advisable that quality assured structured education is made available to all the children and young people living with diabetes the content and delivery of structured education needs regular review auditing and regular assessment so that effectiveness can be calculated and judged there is evidence that educational intervention in childhood and adolescent diabetes have a beneficial effect on glycemic and psychosocial outcomes so uh, i also uh, i am also thankful to the ispad because in 2018 i had this opportunity to attend this joint esd ispad esp post graduate education program for that i received the grant travel grant also so thank you ispad and the all these uh, members here thank you thank you very much for your patience listening